Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm Josh. And welcome to Tech Tested. We're a brand new YouTube channel that is dedicated to bringing you new and innovative ways of optimizing the performance for your PC. Plus, we're going to do some really interesting things with your computer that you probably shouldn't. I'll be your host. And I'm doing video and editing. This is Tech Tested, and let's get started. Are you tired of trying to choose between AMD and NVIDIA for your graphics card manufacturer? Are you tired of choosing between single and multi-GPU configuration for your PC? Well today I think we have a no compromise optimization video for you that I think you're really going to enjoy. We wanted to build a computer with two AMD R9 295X2s in Crossfire and two GTX Titan Zs in SLI for a total of eight GPUs running at the same time in one computer. I, we couldn't afford that, but we wanted to see if it would actually work in principle, and that's what we're presenting with you today. So you may be asking yourself why you want to run eight graphics cards. Well, for starters, we know that AMD and NVIDIA, the maximum graphics cards you can run for each manufacturer, effectively is four. Four AMD graphics cards in Crossfire and four NVIDIA graphics cards in SLI. Another reason is each GPU manufacturer has proprietary technologies that you cannot run on the other GPU manufacturer. For AMD, we have Mantle and FreeSync, just to name a few, and same with NVIDIA, we have Gameworks and G-Sync, as I said before, just to name a few. And the only way to get all of the performance you can out of a single computer is to run four graphics cards from each manufacturer in the same computer. The question is, how do we make this work? Here's the build i7-4790K processor at 4 GHz, an EVGA Z87 classified motherboard, an NZXT 1200 watt 80 plus gold power supply, two HD 4850X2 graphics cards in Crossfire, and two GTX 295 graphics cards in SLI for a total of eight graphics cards. Now in order to get performance from each GPU manufacturer or each set of four graphics cards, you're going to either have to run one monitor with an output cable from each GPU manufacturer to that monitor for a total of two cables to your monitor, or you can do what I did and run two separate monitors, one for your NVIDIA setup and one for your AMD setup. If you want to change the graphics card setup that you're using, the process is very simple. Right click on your desktop, scroll down to screen resolution, select the monitor you want to use, then click make this my primary display. Click apply and you're done. If you guys are wondering how the performance works in this setup, obviously I'm not going to even be able to run DirectX 11 because these graphics cards are pre-DirectX 11 era. However, I did run some benchmarks. For example, I ran uh, Unigine Heaven benchmark as well as the 3D Mark, I think it is uh, the CloudGate benchmark. And it showed that actually, very interestingly, on our NVIDIA setup, Heaven benchmark ran a lot more efficiently than the AMD setup. Actually to the point where I didn't even finish the AMD benchmark. It was so terrible to watch. The frames per second were abysmal. But CloudGate ran a lot better on the AMD setup than it did on the NVIDIA. And to show you guys that we actually had a performance difference from one monitor to the other, I'll show you what I got from our CloudGate um, runs. Over here, this is just a couple notes I took, but the results that I want you to see are right down here. We have, for the GTX 295 Quad SLI, we have a score of 16,714, whereas the Quad Crossfire, we have a score of 21,108. Now, that's just an example to show you and to prove that we are actually getting the Quad SLI and Quad Crossfire, two different setups from each monitor to prove that this is actually working. This could actually work probably better on modern graphics cards for multiple reasons. Um, one, obviously, gra modern graphics cards are a lot more power efficient. So we are running a 1200 watt power supply, which with this setup is really pushing the boundaries because these graphics cards idle load is much higher than a modern graphics card. You could probably get away with a lower wattage power supply because unless you're running multiple games at the same time, you will only be loading up to four of the eight graphics cards at any given time, which would be a lot less demanding than what we have set up here. 
Another reason that a modern graphics card setup would probably work better is because of driver support. The driver support for the graphics cards I'm running ended in t late 2013, early 2014 era, but for modern graphics cards, you've got obviously much more recent support, AMDs every few updates every few months, NVIDIA updates pretty much every month. So with a modern graphics card setup, you would definitely see a much better efficient and performance increase than what we have here today. In conclusion, I'd like to point out a few things. First of all, this kind of computer setup is not for everyone, especially if you're going to be running modern graphics cards. It's extremely expensive. There are a number of drawbacks, including power, heat output. This, this thing has literally made the room temperature rise by probably 5 to 10 degrees Fahrenheit, just sitting here running mild benchmarks. Um, and your motherboard's capability of supporting this many graphics cards along with your processor's ability to support this many graphics cards. There's a lot of hardware problems to overcome and, that you're, and drivers that you're going to have to deal with in order to optimize this. However, if you want a no compromises, all frills for every single game you can get, this is the only way to do it. Like and subscribe to the video if you liked it, leave a comment below, and thank you for watching. In order to get the most performance for all of your games from each manufacturer, you have to use what? Ah! <laughs>